everybody, this is Dan Miller from Bluegrass Unlimited Magazine, and this week I'm going to start a little series on how to improve your chord vocabulary. I'm going to do it on the guitar, but a lot of things I talk about on guitar will apply to other instruments. Uh, you can just uh, figure out how to play these chords on your instruments. Um, most of us that play bluegrass know are open major and minor chords, the common chords used in bluegrass music. Um, bluegrass is the kind of music that likes to ring, use open ringing chords. The guitar player um, wants to provide that downbeat and then that open ringing sound when they hit the chords. And so usually we're going to use our open ringing chords and if if it's an odd key, maybe B flat or something like that, or even B, we're going to capo up so we can continue using our um, G or C chord shapes relative to that, those keys so that we can continue to have that open ringing sound. But there's times when you want to move on from that. Um, a couple instances are maybe you're not the only guitar player at the jam. Um, and if another guitar player or two are doing that boom, chick, boom, chick, and providing that sound, maybe you want to do something a little bit different. And uh, especially if there's not a banjo player or a mandolin player or somebody providing that backbeat chop, maybe it's a small jam and you have several guitar players and then maybe uh, a mandolin player and a fiddle player. When the mandolin player takes his solo and that backbeat chop is gone, um, and there's other guitar players to handle the regular guitar boom chick style of a rhythm, maybe you want to go to some closed chords and play more of a mandolin chop style. Uh, that's one instance where it uh, would behoove you to know how to play some closed chords. Uh, another time would be um, when the tunes start getting into that jazzy um, realm, let's say Sweet Georgia Brown or Alabama Jubilee or Limehouse Blues, those are songs that can show up at Bluegrass Jams. Also, if fiddle players are Kenny Baker fans, they might bring up Festival Waltz or Charmaine or one of those things. Or, you know, you could be backing up a fiddle player that likes that closed chord sock rhythm or even uh, the style of Texas swing rhythm when you have a moving bass line and uh, closed chord uh, chop behind that. So there's a lot of instances where you may go to a jam and knowing more than your standard major and minor open chords would behoove you. And so I'm going to launch into this and typically uh, songs that are going to come over from from a jazz realm like Sweet Georgia Brown, Alabama Jubilee, Limehouse Blues and others are going to um, use what's called a circle of fifths chord progression, okay? Um, I've shown this before, I've got a little circle of fifths mouse pad here, and typically it's a circle of fifths chord progression because it follows this circle. For instance, uh, let's take Sweet Georgia Brown, is in the key of F, and the A part starts over here on D, the next chord is G, the next chord is C, and then it lands on the one, F. If any chord progression follows that, um, that sort of pattern that's laid out on the circle of fifths. They call it a circle of fifths chord progression. Some of your bluegrass standards like Salty Dog Blues follow that chord progression, but lots and lots of your jam session uh, songs that may come from the, the, the jazz realm will be following this um, circle of fifths progression. And the way that works is the dominant seventh chord, especially, but the dominant chord in the key, which is the fifth, um, wants to lead your ear back to, to the one. Okay, it wants to lead your ear back to the one. Now, for instance, a C chord wants to lead you back to F. A, uh, a G chord wants to lead you back to C. A D chord wants to lead you back to G. Well, in a circle of fifths progression, we, the key is F, and we start way over here in, uh, in D, and D is the fifth of G, G is the fifth of C, C is the fifth of F. So we're starting on 
the, the fifth of the fifth of the fifth uh, to go all the way back to the one. And so um, lots of jazz tunes follow that. And this is in terms of a scale, if we're in the key of F, this is the five, this is the two, this is the six. So it's a, they, in jazz they call it a six, two, five, one progression. There's lots of six, two, five, ones. There's a lots of uh, two, five, ones. There's a lots of five, ones in jazz. And so that's, that's where this is coming from. Now, you could, um, because the seventh chord, the dominant seventh chord, wants to lead back to the one, and we've got that falling cascade of fifths going in this where D is the fifth of G, G is the fifth of C, C is the fifth of F, and it's following that progression. You could do your standard chords, and, and it would work. Uh, another thing you could do is do your standard chords, like there's, there's, there's four measures of G at the begin, of, of D at the beginning of the song. You could play play the regular D major chord and then the measure before you go to the G you could bring in your D7. Same with G, the measure before you go to C bring in your open G7 and with C the measure before you go to F bring in your C7 to go to your F chord. Okay that's one way you could do it and that works great but I'm here this week to, to sort of introduce you to some new chord shapes that you may not be familiar with. Um, some of them you may, may be familiar with. But we're going to start up on this 7th for the D. Some of you may be familiar with playing this as your C7 chord. We're just going to move that up two frets and play that D right there. Now I'm, I'm putting my thumb right here to mute that string and I'm going to just do what they call a, sort of a, uh, a chunky rhythm like to have a bass note and then a vamp. And that vamp is, I got my fingers down on the strings, and I'm strumming, and then as soon as I strum, I lift, I lift my fingers off and cut off the noise. So it goes. It's that kind of sound. It's kind of like a mandolin chop. You know, mandolin's maybe just going to play that backbeat, and you can do that too. But um, that kind of sound is what you want, and again, if you're in a jam session and the mandolin player is not there or the mandolin player drops out to play his solo, you can pick that up, especially if there's other guitar players. The problem with too many guitar players playing boom, strum, boom, strum, is that if, you're, if your timing is not, if all you guys aren't exactly hitting that downbeat at the same time, um, or the strum at the same time, it can get really muddy. And so maybe you want to do something different and, and going to some of these closed chord positions and just chopping would be a good idea. Um, you could do your ma regular major minor closed chords or the, the bar chords. And let me say something real quick about a bar chord, okay? Students get really frustrated with sort of this F-shaped F bar chord. Let me go up to G. Oh, we'll, be, we'll be playing F in this, in this song, so let me go to F. Um, when I play a bar chord, I'm not necessarily trying to, to put my fingers down so that every string rings. Really, that's too much, too much stuff. It's too much repeated stuff because a, chord, a major chord is only three notes. And if you're playing all six strings, you've got repeating notes and you don't need them. So really, if I'm going to play a bar chord like this, I'm just playing the top four strings. These last two are muted with this finger. And that's all you that's all you need. A lot of the great jazz guys, and we'll talk about this, they play three note chords, four note chords, even for chords with extensions. And that's all you need. You don't need to play all six strings. So if you're frustrated trying to play bar chords, whether it's this kind of shape or this kind of shape for your C or this kind of shape for your minor, uh, you don't have to play every note. You can just play you know, you can do an F chord like this, you can do an F chord like, like this, or like this. Um, don't have to play every string. Okay, so enough about that. So anyway, this progression on the A part goes from D to G to C to F. Okay, and I'm going to play D7, G7, C7 to the root F, because again, that dominant 7 chord 
um, leads the ear to the next chord in a stronger way, okay? Now, it, I talked about having this chord, C chord moving up to the, the, to the D. The next chord we're going to talk about is also a seventh chord. This is the shape, and I'm going to, I'm going to have a, a diagram so you don't have to uh, uh, look real close at my hand, uh, but I'll talk about it, and uh, you, the diagrams will be there for you to look at. So we started out with this D for four measures, and then we're going to this G7. On the sixth string, I'm at the third fret. I'm muting the fifth string. Fourth string, I'm at the third fret. The, uh, the third string, I'm at the fourth fret. And the uh, second string, I'm at the uh, third fret. That's my G7 chord. And then I'm going to go to C7, same shape I used for the D7. And then I'm going to go to my root F. Now, I, before I go back, instead of staying on F all the way till I go to my D, I'm going to lead into that D by going to an A7, which is A is the fifth of the D. So I'm going to take it one step further. And, instead, and now instead of a 6, 2, 5, 1, I'm going to have a 3, 6, 2, 5, 1. That's the way it lays out when you go a fifth uh, farther. So I'm the second time through, I'm going to go A7, D7, G7, uh, but and then I'm going to change to something else. So the, the A part is going to uh, sound like this. Okay, so look at the uh, chord shapes. For D7, I'm playing this shape. C7, I'm playing this shape. For the G7, I'm playing this shape. For the A7, I'm playing the same shape. For F, I'm doing just a regular F chord that you, you probably first learned when you first learned your F chord. So it's a, just a regular F major chord because we're landing on home. It's in the key of F. Okay. So, um, a couple things. Whenever you're learning chords, these closed chord shapes, it'll behoove you to learn two different ways of making those chords. You'll, you've seen here that I'm doing this shape for the D7 and the C7, and I'm doing this shape for the G7 and the A7. Okay, this has the root, this shape has the root on the, on the fifth string. This has a root on the sixth string. And that's a good idea, is to learn uh, at least two shapes for every chord uh, when you're playing closed chords. One with the root on the sixth string, the other with the root on the fifth string. The reason is, let's say I only knew this shape. Well, I could get away with this, play this here, right? But then when I wanted to go to my G chord, I'd have to go way up to here, right? If I wanted to use that shape for G. Um, it's just a lot easier to keep right in the same area of the fingerboard. You can get away with it and do it with just the one shape and moving it all up and down the, the uh, fretboard, but it's gonna be help, more helpful if you know those two shapes. Just like with your major chord that's closed, you could use this shape for F, G, A, and then once you got to, uh, or B and, and B, but once you got to C, you're going, you're going up real high here. You might want to use this shape for your C and D chord, major chord, when you're playing closed, just because it still stays within uh, a certain uh, area of the fingerboard, which may be easier and faster to get to. Either way, I mean, you could, you could use it either way, but that's why I'm changing different shapes. I'm just playing seventh chords, but I'm using two different kinds of shapes. Okay, now the B part of this, we're going to go back after we go to the, to the um, A7 back to D7, the B part's going to go D7 to G7, just like the first time through, but then it's going to go to a D minor 7. Now this D minor 7 is the same exact shape that I played for G7 and, C, uh, and A7, 
but I'm moving it over one string, and that's a D minor 7, okay? D is the root here, and that's the minor 7. Then I'm going to go to A7, D7, A7, okay? Then I'm going to do this walk down using uh, this seventh shape uh, for the end of it. I want to go... So I'm walking down chromatically from F7, E7, E flat 7 to D7. Then G7, C7, back to F, okay, and the end of the song. So going through that whole thing, uh, it's going to be... this and, and mute that. You can play F like this and play that either way. So that last part again, I kind of flubbed it. Um, okay, so that's it. Look at the chart that I've provided with this, uh, with this lesson to get the exact uh, sort of chord layouts of, 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 the, of where to put your fingers, the chord charts of where to put your fingers. I have chord charts and I also have it laid out, you know, uh, how many measures you're going to play of each chord for Sweet Georgia Brown. So the next time Sweet Georgia Brown comes around at the jam session, instead of playing your, uh, your open chords, try, try this little swingy feel and, uh, and the close chords with the, with the vamp and the chop. And uh, the hardest thing, if you're not familiar, most of us are familiar with this, this seventh chord because that's how we play our C7. But you may not be familiar with this, this shape. That's, that's going to be the hard one to get. This shape, not only to get the, main, the, the, uh, the G7 and A7, but it's the same exact shape to get that D minor 7. So work on that. Work on changing that. work from changing to this seventh chord to this seventh chord to this seventh chord work it back and forth and back and forth and then you get used to playing that um, and again we do that walk down which is kind of cool starting at the F and walking down to the D and then G7 C7 F again that's your your um, circle of fifths you walk down from F my circle of fifths again. Okay? D, G, F, I mean G, D, D7, uh, G7, C7, back to F. That's the circle of fifths. So try it on Sweet Georgia Brown. If you know Limehouse Blues or uh, Alabama Jubilee, try a similar thing. They're, they're different chord progressions played in different keys, but um, try them there too. Try these shapes and try um, working with the, with, with the vamp with those songs as well. So anyway, this is Dan Miller. I hope you enjoy learning these chords. We'll next time show you some different chord shapes and apply them to some different songs that you might run across at uh, a bluegrass jam. So until next time, this is Dan Miller for Bluegrass Unlimited Magazine. Thanks. <laughs>